Are you ready? It's time! For the Beast Cast! Hola amigos. Hello. It is... It is... The devil up in here. It is the Beast Cast. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I, I swear I'm done. Okay. Um, welcome to the Beast Cast. Hold on, I'm changing my microphone on Discord because Discord is loser. Okay, it should be better now for you, right, Mr. Bones? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so as always, I'm here with Mr. Raven. Raven. What up? Raven Scones. What up? Um, and our agenda today is <clears throat> very, very interesting. So we're first going to talk about um, the TIFF. So TIFF was the, this week, there was the Toronto International Film Festival. And it was pretty good for the most part, except for one film in particular. <laughs> now, I, I, Raven, I don't know if you've heard about this, the, the film with Mr. with Mr. Pine here, Chris Pine. But it was a disaster. So, Chris Pine, you know him from, God, what would you know him from? Star Trek? He was in Star Trek, wasn't he? Yeah, I know who you're talking about, yeah. yeah. And then he was also in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah. Which, that movie was okay. I, I thought it was, it was kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy, but, you know, placed him in medieval times. So, I, I thought that was interesting. Um, What else? Oh, yeah. He played in Don't Worry Darling, but I doubt anybody's actually ever seen that movie. So... But he played kind of like, yeah, it's like a, it's a weird movie. It's about like, it's got, um, what's her face? Um, oh yeah, it's got Harry Styles in it. It's got Harry Styles in it and it's about like a weird, like, yeah, it's really weird. I, I can't even explain the movie. It's really, it, it flopped last year. Um, anyways, so yeah, so he wanted, he, he's like, you know what? I think I'm pretty good at directing. So I'm going to, I'm going to move to becoming a director and stuff like that. You know, I'm going to. I'm going to make my directorial debut at the Toronto International Film Festival because it's one of the biggest film festivals. There's like five big film festivals and it's one of the bigger ones um, next to the the one in France that everybody goes to and then also uh, Sundance and whatever. And so <clears throat> he decides, you know what, my movie is pretty good. You know, it's got me, Danny DeVito, um, and, and it's supposed to be like Chinatown, which is a movie from the 70s or like The Big Lebowski, kind of the same plot. It flopped. It was horrible. Um, the acting apparently was abysmal. People were walking out of the film, like out of the film at the festival, um, which is like a really? big, yeah, like a big, that's like a big no, no. Like you're not like, even if the movie's bad, you know, at film festivals, you're supposed to kind of stay and then be like, yeah, you know, you know, you tried, you know, but people were dead ass walking out. It was that bad. And he, um, he apparently it, it is the lowest Rotten Tomato score on his, um, on his Rotten Tomatoes, uh, like, actor account or whatever it is. The movie, I think, here, we can look at what the actual, uh, like, what the, what the Rotten Tomatoes score is. 23% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yikes. Yeah. And, that is um, a yikes. It was supposed to be, I mean, it's got a good cast. And I, I, I don't know how it just, it, it just had to have been horrible writing. I mean. I don't know. I don't know how you can make Danny DeVito not be liked. That's tough, man. I know. Like I even liked him in Matilda, dude. Actually, nah. People like Matilda. Come on now. Nobody didn't not like Matilda. Yeah, people who don't like Matilda don't get on my friends list. <laughs> I used to watch that movie a lot when I was younger. I can't remember. Is she? Does she? She actually has like powers, sort of, right? Matilda does. Yeah, she does. And then I remember the boy who had to like eat the chocolate at the school. Like she wants to go to school, and I just remember that scene of the fat kid with the chocolate around his face. I still want to know what the hell that lady was baking in that chocolate cake to make people <laughs> never want to eat it. It was like bubbling and like shit. I was like, whoa. 
Because it was like the German, <laughs> it's like the German lady with the slick back hair, and like in the pain chamber. Mm-hmm. Do you remember like the the bit, <laughs> the time the detention thing where they put him in like the 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 bodysuit thing and it had like spice and shit. Sh- <laughs> it was like what the yeah, heck? I remember that yeah. But no, that movie. I, I don't know how this movie could have possibly just flop. You know, it's got a good cast and Chris Pine. Not saying he's a like the best actor of all time, but he's not a bad actor. He's pretty good. I've liked him in pretty much everything I've ever seen him in. But apparently he kind of is melodramatic. Like, apparently, outside of films, he kind of gets a little dramatic. Like, there was that, uh, that Don't Worry Darling. The only thing that actually came out of that film was the drama between him and Harry Styles. He apparently, like, uh, spit on Harry Styles' lap at the film festival where they were premiering the movie at last year. And Really? I, yeah, I, I don't know why, but apparently harry styles was like no no it was it wasn't anything bad you know it, it was just us messing around and it's like are you sure about that because harry styles looked a little pissed like he was like dude like you just spit on my fucking lap like when he, so chris pine I, there's a video somewhere um we could probably show it for everybody who's watching on youtube uh chris pine harry styles spit <clears throat> Bro, that's foul. You don't go spitting in people's laps. Yeah, yeah. We can. We'll, we'll change it for everybody who uh, who wants to take a good look see on YouTube. Um. We're not gonna play the audio just in case. Oh no! It was Harry, it was the other way around. Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine. Look at this. Hold on. You can see his face. Look at his face. Look. <laughs> I forgot it was the other way around. Okay. That that changes everything. That changes my whole topic. But apparently he is still melodramatic either way. That was kind of funny though. Maybe he deserved it. I don't know. I mean, why would you spit on somebody else's lap though? Let's read the comments. Chris uh, said Harry didn't know. spit on him, but the way he just stopped and looked down tells me otherwise. But yeah, um, yeah, but no, he's a, he's a good actor, so, but judging from this picture, it makes me not want to watch, um, the movie, the picture that we have on the episode screen, um, yeah, (laughs) it makes me not want to watch the movie just by looking at whatever is going on. What's the movie called again? Pool Man. So it's called Pool Man. Pool Man. Oh my God. Okay. More like Pool Man. Oh, whoa. Oh wow, the zinger! Let me slap my knee. Bazinga! Oh, let me slap my ass. Okay. Damn. <laughs> Bazinga! Oh, dude. Speaking of which, have you ever watched Young Sheldon? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you planning on ever watching Young Sheldon? No. <laughs> I don't know a single person who's ever actually watched Young Sheldon. Why I don't even would know you? what the hell that is. You know from uh, The Big Bang Theory? The, the the funny show about nerds? I've never watched it. Oh, really? I I kind of... I, I think Big Bang Theory is pretty good. I, it's not like my favorite show of all time, but... It's a good show. Um, And there's a character, Sheldon. And he's like really smart. And so they made a show about him when he's younger. And it's just, I've heard it's abysmal. Like, it's not fun to watch. Uh, that is sad. Oh, dude, I didn't know this. So everybody was memeing The Good Doctor. You know that show about the doctor who's got, like, autism or Down syndrome or whatever it is? Yeah. And I was trying to figure out, like, dude, that guy looks so familiar. Like, where have I seen th- that kid from? Like, as a kid. Like, he had to have been a kid actor. He was, dude. He played in, he played in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The 2005 one with Johnny oh, Depp. Oh, damn. He played Charlie Buckets. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. I am a surgeon. Dude gave up the factory to go to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. I guess. <clears throat> you could say that. But, um... 
I just think like here's here's the deal about about like film festivals. I'm this is a hot take. I'm not a fan of film festivals. Just because film festivals back in the day, up until like ten years ago, they were like they were they were cool because like it was a way for people before like before the internet was massive to show off in a big group in front of a big audience. Like, they're indie films. Like, films that were not, like, Mm -hmm. made by 20th Century Fox or Warner Brothers or anything like that. Okay? But nowadays, film festivals, yeah, those indie films are still there. And then you'll have the out-of-region films that will never play in a a movie theater near you ever. Like, the the French films and the Spanish films and stuff like that. Um, But it's mainly just all massive movies. Like, a lot of it is massive movies now. Like, it's kind of been tainted a little bit. Because now that the internet exists, you know, everybody's like, well, I can actually try and make money by putting my movie not at the film festival and putting it on YouTube as a short film that's, like, 40 minutes long, you know, or 30 minutes long. And yeah. so that's kind of, that's kind of in, in a way, is semi-ruined film festivals. Because back in the day, dude, film festivals, you know, you'd go and there'd be, like, thousands of movies that were just all indie films, like, like that, that have a budget of maybe fucking... Twenty thousand dollars, you know, something like that. But now it's like, it's movies like Pool Man that are like not necessarily massive blockbusters, but they're still big films. Yeah, I feel like it should stay for indie films and small well, studios. I mean, it's fine that they have these films there, but like, dude, when I see movies, like sometimes I hear like at Sundance, like last year there was like. Oh God. What was that movie that premiered at Sundance? Oh, Dungeons and Dragons. Or was that this year? That might have been this year, because I think that movie came out this year, didn't it? Yeah, it came out this year. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons premiered at Sundance. And I'm like, why? Why is that movie premiering at Sundance? Like, it is, that movie is what? That movie is like, what's the budget of Dungeons and Dragons? I'm assuming 150 mil. At least. 150 mil. Yep, on the dot. You're right. Uh, I mean, dude, it was a good movie, but like, no, it did not need the premiere. Like, that's a massive movie distributed by Paramount Pictures, and it's got a massive cast. Which the cast is fine. I mean, you know, some indie films have massive casts, like Nick Nick Cage. He always plays in a lot of indie films. Does, isn't that like his thing? Like, um, yep. Nick, he'll play in yeah. like indie films because like just the like for very cheap or for free. Yeah, he'll play. He'll play either very. Free, he'll play for free, depending on what it is, or he'll charge you just forty k. Um, because that was like, well, Renfield was a bigger movie, but still, like, um, him playing in Renfield, like, that's kind of how they got him for Renfield, because Renfield wasn't like going to be a massive, massive movie, but it definitely is nothing without Nick Cage, personally. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> I enjoyed that movie because of him. Yes. Oh. God, I the fuck uh, the uh, the gosh, man. I'm uh, sorry, I forgot. We have to cut down on the swearing by thirty percent. I'm trying, guys. It's just my vocabulary is a little, a little dirty. Anyways, no. So, like Renfield, the the thing with Renfield is there, like when he um when he goes and gets his own apartment in the movie, and he like he goes yeah. and shops at Macy's or whatever, and gets his like stupid, uh, shirt. And then he, like, opens the door, and and Dracula's sitting there. Like, you cannot do that scene with any other person other than Nick Cage. Like, the way that that scene was... No, you can't. The the way that scene was was played out, like, he... I want to see a Dracula, like, 1931 remake. Like, exactly how Dracula 1931 was, but a little more modern and funnier with Nick Cage as Dracula. Like, he is such a good Dracula. Like, he is such a good Dracula, dude. Me too. I, I watched that movie and I was like, why can't we, why can't we have this? Why can't we actually have this without it being a movie? <laughs> without it being a spinoff funny movie. Because he does play good Dracula. It, yeah. Nicolas Cage decided um, to c- stop being in major movies and go to independent movies because he felt like there were a lot of ideas that were just being bashed or or weren't explored in Hollywood because they were reusing the same crap over and over and over again, that, um, you know, some of these small-time directors have really good ideas and they're never given the time of day because studios don't have faith in them. So 
there came, you know, the movie like Pig. I don't know if you saw that one where he plays this uh, Gordon Ramsay chef that lives out in the, the woods and has a, a pet pig that can smell out truffles. And it basically turns into a John Wick, but with a pig. And it was pretty fucking nice. There's my first swear word. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, and it was pretty nice. And he plays in some of the other films, like that one that was supposed to be the Five Nights at Freddy movie, but it got turned into something else because they didn't want it anymore. He got hired for it. I forget the name of it, like Willie's Wonderland or something. And um, he literally does not say a line in the whole movie. Like he does the whole movie without saying a single line. And I don't know how they got him to do that. I think they maybe wanted him to do it for free. And he and he was like, only if I don't say a line. But he did a great job at saying nothing the whole time. Like He just does a good job. I like Nicolas Cage and a lot of the stuff that he does. And seeing him in independent films has been nice. Speaking of FNAF at Freddy's, Five Nights at Freddy's. FNAF at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later because our, our next... Rip in peace. <laughs> Rip in peace. <laughs> rip in peace uh, uh loling out loud um we will we we will discuss this later because we have a topic on upcoming movies but for the meantime i want to hear one thing from you about the okay. five nights of freddy's movie do you think it's actually going to be a good movie no <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest i watched the trailer to it and but it's got I, just said in my, it. I literally <laughs> i literally said to myself i said bro this this looks like what we had nicholas cage in that was actually supposed to be the movie this it's the same it's the same premise only the difference is, is they actually added the uh, someone is actually being a security guard to the storyline whereas in the last one it it's, was just nicholas cage it's the guy had to from the clean hunger up. games <laughs> I know. I saw Pete there. I was like, bro, Hunger Games got you bad. Did you offer yourself as tribute this time to do this? <laughs> oh, my. I was like, how did they get this how, actor how, to agree? How did he fall from grace so hard, man? Like you were you were in like one of the biggest film like trilogies of of the 2010s. And then you just you just move. You move to Five Nights at Freddy's, man. It's got to be like a like he got it. He's just got to love the movie. Like he's got to love the script or something. Like there's or maybe like he was like blackmailed into doing it. Like maybe they have a picture of him like naked like and he's got like a small wiener or something. I don't know, dude. There's got to be something. There's no there's way. He, there's no way he looked at this movie and said, "Yeah, I will do this movie for the for the amount of money I'm getting for it." Also, speaking of this movie, dude. Spoiler alert. I went and watched this is one of our topics that we'll have later. I went and watched A Haunting in Venice. And on the wall of our movie theater here in in uh in the metropolis Batesville of eleven thousand people where I go to college, I'm not even kidding. They actually have a Five Nights at Freddy's poster. Like it's coming to my theater. Like it's actually going oh to be. Oh my here. gosh! I I can't believe it. It's actually coming to theaters. I don't I don't know how or why, but the movie's actually like gaining traction. I, when I saw Corey Kenshin in the in the trailer, I was like, okay, you know what, that's deserved, because bro, like, got his whole career from Five Nights at Freddy's, like, the start. Like, I remember <clears throat> watching Corey Kenshin way back in 2014, and he played the first Five Nights at Freddy's, and I remember I was watching him for something else. It wasn't Five Nights at Freddy's. It was, like, right before he did his Five Nights at Freddy's. I was like, you know, because back in the day, I used to be, like, a big, like, you know, I was one of those fat kids that would, like, sit on his fucking iPad with a... It, it, the sticky fingers, you know, and watch YouTube all day, like when I wasn't at school. And so yeah. I was like, I remember I was like, oh, you know, this guy's pretty cool. He's got like 25,000, 30,000 subscribers. Subscribed to him, you know, did all the did the whole thing, binge watched a bunch of his content. All of a sudden, I see him in the next, like two weeks later, he's got like 150,000 subs. And I'm like, whoa, like what the heck? I was like, no way. And I looked, and it was because, dude, he had, like, that, he, he did, like, he played the first Five Nights at Freddy's, and it had, like, it got, like, two million views. Like, it was insane. Like, it was so, it was Damn. so, yeah, it was, like, it blew up. And I was like, whoa, whoa. And, I mean, Corey is a funny guy, too. So, I mean, like, well-deserved. Now he's at, like, seven mil subs. So, I want to say that's my thing. Okay, 
This is my bread and butter. Actually, he might be at like 10 mil now. He's... He yeah, dude. He's got to be at like uh. Let's see how many subs is he at? Seventeen point one mil. Okay, so this is way bigger. So that's my thing. Okay, so this is my big like um. Uh, this is like my big bread and butter thing. Okay, this is like the one achievement I have in my life. If I die, if I died tomorrow, and I had to find an achievement in my life, it was that I was one of the first twenty thousand subs to a seventeen point one million subscriber YouTube channel. That is beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. That I, is beautiful. Um, yep, I am. Um, that if I died tomorrow, I have an accomplishment. His content was fun, but yeah. So no, he's in that movie as like a driver. He's got a cameo. I dude, they need to have Markiplier in this movie, please. For the love, have a have a oh Markiplier cameo. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Market Pliers, and welcome back to FNAF at Freddy's. Today, we're going to be uh, playing this indie horror game. I couldn't I, make I, You know what's going to be hilarious? Uh, if the movie comes out, and it's bad, and people consider the one that Nick Cage was in to be better. Like Superman? <laughs> Nick no. Cage's Superman would have never been good, though. Did he... That movie like died, didn't it? Like that that they never even made the movie, right? No, they never made the movie. So it was kind of weird to see that in the Flash. I thought that was awesome though. The Flash cameo. What did you I never heard cuz I was like Raven, you're going to lose your mind when you watch the Flash cuz you're going to you cuz I know how much you love Nick Cage and then like when I saw that, I immediately I went to the theater. I think it was with Was I No, I didn't go to that with Charlie. I think I went with who did I go with? I don't remember, but it was Josh, my friend Josh. And we both looked at each other. And we go, was that Nicholas Cage? <laughs> we were like, yeah. <laughs> like when it happened, I was just like, huh, Nicholas Cage, nice mane, fully shaved. That's a, that's a, that's an interesting Uncanny. Superman right there. Uncanny. Now there was a movie he was in that came out very recently uh I, like a few months ago it was called sympathy for the devil i don't know if you saw that one nope uh i actually really liked it um so go see it nice it, what's your favorite like indie nick cage movie um because personally i i think <clears throat> like here's the thing I've, I've watched a decent amount of nick cage um, but not, I haven't watched too many of like his smaller indie films that he does with like those indie directors. Uh, the one that I did like though, it's not really an indie movie, but I thought it was pretty interesting that he was in was Snowden. Cause I had to watch Snowden for a class in college last year. I was like, Hey, this movie's kind of like interesting. And he plays like a, he, he plays like a kind of like a old retired, not retired, but he's like an old, um, like all all hope is lost kind of like guy in the in the government, which I thought was kind of like cool. It was kind of funny. What's your favorite mm-hmm. indie film from him? Like that he's in. I'd have to say Mandy. What's that? Describe the plot. Mandy. Yeah. Um, well, how do I put it? It's one that you shouldn't watch if you're intoxicated. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's about um. Basically, uh, him and his wife live out in like the forest and a hippie cult comes along and ruins their little um, living out there in the forest by doing some really bad crap. And he basically goes full John Wick on them. Dude, Uh, I love how like every like indie Nick Cage movie is like, yeah, this happens. Then he goes full John Wick kills everybody i don't know how else to describe it without like spoiling it that's the thing is this movie this was like his first movie back um on his like really long hiatus of really bad main hollywood movies Mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what surprised me about it was i thought this was gonna be just the -the over-the-top typical nicholas cage because like this is my mandy was a movie i watched uh that came after I had got done watching the movie Mom and Dad that he was in. I don't know if you saw that one. No. <laughs> I It was about parents randomly killing their kids. Yeah. <laughs> that that's not in a comedic cool. way, Nicolas Cage trying to kill his um uh two kids with the wife in the movie he has, like randomly all the kids around the world start being killed by their parents and parents going crazy. Even like grandpas driving like cross country to kill their like 40 year old son it's 
really <laughs> like a really yeah i know it's a really screwed up movie imagine a zombie apocalypse but it's parents not zombies that that's what it is and the movie was like just randomly stupid and it was like funny for the time when you watch it but that's like that was my recent nicholas cage movie from him and then i saw mandy or the trailer for Mandy, and I was like, all right, here we go, Nick Cage. And then I saw it was by an independent studio, and I was all like, dang, he must be really down, like broke, because <laughs> it's not even a Hollywood movie. And I watched it, and I was just like, wow, that's got to be the best movie I've ever seen. Do not watch that movie if you're intoxicated or under the influence of anything, because you won't be the same. Um, One, one thing, too. Didn't he play in like a movie where he played like a, as like a truck driver or something like that? That was like a lot of people didn't like. It was kind of nasty. I remember seeing like a review of it. Um, truck driver. It. I don't know if he's a truck driver, but like there's a scene where there's like a truck driver or like he's a truck driver. And I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember what it was. Uh, here we can find it. Right here. Nick. Cage. Sure, find it. Truck. Oh, truck, truck. Driver. Movie. Oh, and then my second favorite uh, Nicolas Cage movie is uh, Joe. Joe. It's literally what it's called. Uh, that might be the movie I'm thinking of. Hold on. No, it's not. No, that's. Uh... Oh, this looks like a real movie, actually. Oh, never mind. It only had two million at the box office. Jeez. It's adapted from a book, though. Just titled Joe. Nick Cage's most popular movie's gotta be um, National, National Treasure. Treasure. Yeah, right. And Face Off. That makes sense. Could the movie you're thinking of be Drive Angry? Maybe. I don't know. I just know Nicolas Cage has a really good way of just playing the crazy person. And, you know, I kind of like it. What's the movie The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent that he played in with Pedro Pascal? Oh, is yeah, that the movie? Him. That's that movie where the memes from where he's like where he looks over at him and then Pedro Pascal looks over at him and they like. Uh huh. Oh, gosh. That movie is literally Nicolas Cage playing himself. The premise is Nicolas Cage gets hired to go to like some rich boy party or whatever and things take a, a, a funny turn. Uh, it, it's literally him playing himself in the movie. It, it got really good scores. I haven't fully seen it. Dude, I forgot. Oh my gosh. I forgot he plays in Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. He voice acts. Um, He voice acts the guy, the, the noir Spider-Man. That's good. Did he voice act it well? Yes, it's actually it's awesome, dude. Hold on. We'll, we'll, we won't get caught. You, you want an example of really bad voice acting from him? Yes, please. He voice acted um, uh, uh, Dr. Tenma in Astro Boy. <laughs> the Astro no Boy way. movie. No way the low, he did that. The, the, low, the low budget Astro Boy movie. Yeah, he did the voice acting for it, and it is horrible. As a kid, you like it because you're just like, oh my God, Astro Boy, Here we you're go. brought to life. But, Listen. like, it's horrible. Listen to this. It's 1933, and I'm a private eye. You would hear the day before, hey, you're going to work with Nick Cage tomorrow, but then you'd walk into a room and Nick Cage would be there. That alone was amazing. Fireman War. He's probably. Oh, wait, no, eating. dude. I want the actual voice lines. Nicholas Cage voice lines. Uh, give me some lines, bro. We'll just do this one. Hey, fellas. Wherever I go, the wind follows. And the wind, it smells like rain. <laughs> You're, You're like me. me. My name is Peter Parker. I was good by <laughs> Dude, okay. But no, dude, he's he I loved him in this movie. Can you fight them all off at once? Surprise attack. Surprise attack. <laughs> dude, he he's a good voice actor. Come on now. He's a good voice actor. Okay, what is it an Astro yeah. Boy though? 
Astro Boy. Yeah, what you just heard that you played is a hundred times better than the effort he put into Astro Boy. It's like this dude came to work tired the whole movie. Astro There's Boy. like no emotion. It's like he just funneled it in there. He was just like, oh, okay, fine, whatever, sure. Let's, let me just say these lines. Okay, so he plays as Dr. Tenma. Yeah. I got here as fast as I could. Where is he? Where's Toby? I sent him to his room. Please, just deactivate him and take him away. I can't bear to see his face again. Ew. Ew. I don't know how I feel about that. <clears throat> Was there actually a good Astro Boy movie? I don't remember. Did we? Did they? Did America ever actually make a good Astro Boy movie? <clears throat> not an Astro Boy. Not not one named Astro Boy. But we did make the Alita Battle Angel, which is essentially Astro, Astro Boy. Boy. Yeah. Um. Wait. That's got the guy in it. It's got the kid. He plays Astro Boy. The the kid who plays Charlie. <laughs> Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, dude, no way. What the frick? Oh my god, he's just everywhere. He's like in, he's everywhere. Okay, if you take out Nicolas Cage's performance in Astro Boy, the movie was actually decent. Like, I, I grew up loving Astro Boy and watching the show. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. It was Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, it was okay. The movie was fine. It was okay. But, like, Nicolas Cage kind of threw it off with his weird monotone acting. <laughs> Mono. That's, like, the only way you can describe it. It's just bleak. It is just bleak. Like, you're just literally reading a script. Like, for example, if if, if you just pulled up, like, a script and you just said, hello, you know, uh, send the boy away, you know, I just don't want to deal with him. It's like, okay. You, dude, you're not even trying, bro. Are you sure you should be using the core to build him? I must. Yes. I won't lose him again. Yes. <laughs> what kind of acting is that, Nick? He Come played on, in. Bro. He played in uh, the the X Men movie. He played as uh, the fight the, 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 the skull guy, Flamin Flamin Skull. What's his name? Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. There you go. Was that X Men or was that just Ghost Rider? That was just Ghost Rider. Isn't there an X Men that's like essentially Ghost Rider though, <clears throat> with the flame and skull, Spitfire? Uh, um, uh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, hold on. There is. There's. The, there's a flame guy in the X Men. Hold on. I just but don't know his he's name. He's an actual flame guy, though, isn't he? <clears throat> yeah. No. I, it's not what I was thinking of. His name is Pyro. Yeah, no, that is no. Ghost Rider was kind of funny though. I remember watching Ghost Rider at my uh, aunt's house. <clears throat> but anyways, so no, I think that was a good first segment here. So moving on, we will be discussing when we come back. We will be discussing uh, a few things. Number one, we have a uh, gosh, I'm blanking. Oh yeah, we're gonna be talking about a haunting in Venice plus. We got some movies coming up this year that are going to be bad, maybe good. We don't know. Uh, we'll see you when we come back. Woo! And we are back with the Beast cast. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, we're Woo! back. And uh, so, Raven, you watched a movie this week. Um, talk to me, correct? Yep, horror movie. Okay. Uh, why don't we? Uh, why don't we talk about it a little bit? Get, give us a good rundown and um, did you like it so it'll have this will have some spoilers uh but nothing i don't think you won't even get from the trailer because i'm not going to talk about how it ends or whatever but everything i'm assuming is in the trailer so i'll just say it the premise of the movie is original which was what shocked me okay i i thought it was an interesting um premise to the movie uh i i think it missed a few marks but i actually i found it entertaining so essentially a bunch of kids and by kids i mean like teenagers uh they found this decaying hand that is encased in ceramic and they figured out that if you held the hand like you're shaking it and you said the words talked to me that it was able to summon spirits in front of you and then if you said the words you know uh I, I, I let you in it you let them possess you 
And these kids basically use this as like an alternative to drugs because getting possessed and unpossessed is apparently equivalent to feeling like you're high and on <laughs> drugs and things you're not supposed to do. Uh, I thought it was a, a really cool movie. I like the premise of it. I kind of just feel like it, 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 uh, it failed its execution, but it was still original enough to where I was actually sitting there wanting to know what happened next in the movie. Cause I, I'm like, you can't just screw around. Oh yeah. The hand belonged to a, a, a medium so that somebody who was alive that was able to communicate between both worlds and apparently their hand got severed. I don't know how. Well, uh, speaking of mediums, uh, I'll get into that because there's actually that's like the whole point of a ta- uh, of a haunting in Venice, too. It's about. A oh, yeah. So but I saw the trailers for this movie. And now would you would you recommend if right now would you recommend me watching this movie? Like uh, just the uh, not just me, but the general just bloke who's listening right now. Well, yeah, I would bloke. recommend that they watch the movie. Is it now? Because you know how horror kind of in the past, like 10, 15 years has kind of been, you know, severed. Like horror movies have started to become like really bad. Is it different enough from most horror movies that you'll you you can under like you can understand like what's going on, but it's not going to be like boring because it's been done like a thousand times before? Yeah, I, I would say go ahead and do it. Uh, yes, I do think it's different enough to not be like the typical, there is a lot of, um, uh, the F around and find out in this movie that I feel like people should probably see. So they probably don't repeat the same mistake. <laughs> uh, okay. what was that movie that came out last year? Smile. I, did you like that movie? You know, the one with the, I did actually, you it did like that movie. Out. I thought the I thought like the actual entity, like the smile entity, was pretty was pretty cool. Like the it was like a very SCP like, you know. Yeah, I thought mm-hmm. that was I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I wouldn't watch that in theaters though, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is pretty good. I, I'll tell you one thing though, like I'm not like I'm such a good I'm a horror fan, but like of like old horror movies, dude. Because like horror movies don't scare me. Like watching The Conjuring, like I don't get scared watching The Conjuring. Uh, I like slasher movies though, like because that's considered technically horror. Slasher movies like uh, Scream, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the Thirteenth. Those movies are awesome. And speaking of that too, <clears throat> we can just we can just kind of mosey into this since uh, mm-hmm. this will be the topic for this thirty minute segment. Saw X two is an upcoming movie. Oh my gosh! Are you going to at some point watch Saw X? Yeah, I will at some point. But you're not going to jump on it, like, right away? No, no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because supposedly this is going to be the last Saw movie. Yeah, that's a cap. Because <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 jig, the, the Jigsaw guy, the guy, uh, what's his name? Can't, I'm blanking on his name, the character name. But he's dying. He's going to die. He's cancer yeah. or something like that. So they're like, it's the last Saw movie saw x dude this is the you know how we had barbenheimer on the 21st of july yeah yeah dude this is the next barbenheimer dude this and paw patrol dude oh my god stop (laughs) with the paw patrol man (laughs) paw patrol and saw x are releasing in theaters on the same night and it's going to be it's going to be the greatest thing of all time now saw the reason why they're they're touting its last isn't he didn't just now get cancer uh, i don't know if you follow the saw movie lore at all i have not this, watched the saw movie this, since the first one okay this movie takes place between like two and three. Oh. oh so yeah this it, okay. is yeah okay well then yeah that just makes me not want to watch it even more <laughs> they're literally cramming so I, I literally i think somebody can find the comment under the the official trailer uh a dude commented saying wow they really trying to make this man do so much before and after his death it's insane so he does die in the movies then right yeah in the previous movies he's already dead it's just he left elaborate traps up and what's his other name john kramer or work. whatever um i think so well, because know, that's almost. what i remember from uh uh cred dead by daylight when you play as jigsaw uh you plays the pig yeah like john kramer's his name he's the pig or he's not the pig but he has like a person who's the pig right like there's a because it's like because like his daughter was like died 
on the year of the pig or whatever, right? Or something like that. I don't I don't follow the Saw lore, but it's something like that. And then ever since then, like his daughter was taken from him. He's just been the you know, and he's been a killer. The I actually like the pig in Dead by Daylight. It's a cool concept. Did you know that in Dead by Daylight, speaking of FNAF at Freddy's too, while we're at this, Five Nights at Freddy's, there was supposed to be a, a spring trap killer in Dead by Daylight. Really? <laughs> yeah. And it was essentially going to be the same thing as the, um, uh, it was going to be the same thing as the pig, right? So essentially how the pig works is it's like, she, she she's a really fast killer. And she, when, she, when she knocks you down and puts you on the hook, she puts like one of those uh, reverse bear traps on your head or whatever. And if you don't, if you don't go to these little jigsaw stations and jigsaw laughs at you, like you try to like, you, you put your hands through the things, you know, like with the, with the, uh, with the knives and you have mm-hmm. to try and you, you have to try and take the helmet off. Like that's where you find the key. So spring trap was going to put like, he was essentially the same thing, but instead of being able to, to take the reverse bear traps off, you would be put in when you would get knocked down, you would be put in a animatronic suit, like one of the body suits. And essentially what you would do is you could not take the suit off. Once you got the suit on, you couldn't take it off, it, which is why the killer kind of sucked because you were really loud and you could see like where everybody was with the, um, with the suits. And they also had the spring lock mechanism thing. So you would constantly have to go and wind it up at these stations. And if you didn't, the spring locks would activate and you'd die. It was kind of, he was kind of busted. And also the, it, and also yeah. that was right when Scott Cawthon got into that weird, like, um, like drama stuff like like four years ago and so then they pulled out of the deal too but it was all in there it was like you can there was people that leaked the files like um it was it, it would have been a cool concept i think it would have been cool to see it come to like like to life but you know i, I just I, I don't know about that so so yeah so saw x is coming out which i probably am not going to go see it mainly because it's really expensive for me to see movies now, and uh, I'm not going to waste my money going to see Saw X. I, if you want my opinion, I think Saw X is maybe, let's see, what's the budget of Saw X right now? Let's find out. 70 mil. 70 mil. You looked it up? No. Oh. Sazi. I have to say Saw X. Sazi. It's co- <laughs> They're just going to wind down. Saw Y is next. So the. Budget was. Show me the budget. Oh, they don't even got the budget on here. They're afraid. I'm gonna guess it's not gonna make its money back. Not even close. Fifteen oh, million my dollars. Bad. It says here the um. That doesn't sound right. There. <laughs> what? What is it? I mean, I just simply typed in Saw X budget, and it said 1.2 mil. <laughs> no, there's no way. That that's not that's not it. No. I saw it somewhere 15 mil right there when I looked that up. So I don't know, <clears throat> but so yeah, so that's one of the movies that's coming out. I'm not excited for it at all. Now I'll tell you what I am excited for. There's a few movies I'm very excited for. <gasps> the Marvels. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> dude i hope that movie gets pushed back just keep pushing it back until it never uh, that movie out. shouldn't be, you want to know what's okay this is this is this is the funniest crap you're ever going to hear me say i went i i i think it was with yeah it was with you and we yes. went to go see yeah. indiana jones yeah. we saw indiana yeah we jones. saw yeah when we saw the trailer for it i'm gonna be honest I, I the movie actually almost sold me with that trailer until the cats came running down the steps Dude, the like, the army of kitties is literally what made me just go nah never mind i forgot this is marvel like that's that's literally because i was actually enjoying it. i was like dang all three of these like powerful chicks gonna do stuff that actually looks good this looks nice it's it's selling me and all of a sudden all these little kitties come running down steps and i'm like oh okay well now you ruined it uh, I had nothing against cats i'm just saying the way that they showed it in the trailer just it it brought me back to how they they don't do anything interesting. So the 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 problem that I have, <laughs> and this is will be this is going to be our final topic of today, which will be later, um, when we come back from our second break, is going to be on Marvel. Um, I'm I'm kind of sick of Marvel a little bit, and I'm especially sick of, uh, Brie Larson 
in particular because she's just not a good actor. Like, I just, I don't like her in a lot of stuff. The only good movie Brie Larson was ever in was King Kong 2016. And, or was it 2017? It was one of those years. It was King Kong, that King Kong Skull Island movie. It was a good movie. Yeah, and was she was good. good in, she was good in that. But other than that, I she's never sold me on a role. She's not a good, uh, like, uh, freaking Captain Marvel. I'm I'm not a fan of her. I'm not a fan of the stuff that she does outside of um, like acting and stuff like that. And the thing is, especially with the movie, is that one that wouldn't drive me to not go see the movie. But Marvel just came off of what was it, Miss Marvel? which was horrendous. Yeah. It was horrendous. And now they're going to try and sell me a movie on something I don't like, plus something that was considered one of the worst things to be made by Marvel. Not going to watch it. I'm sorry. And also, you know, it's Marvel. So they, they always make good trailers and you think it's going to be good. And then it ends up being just so bad. Or not so bad, but, you know, you could do better. Like, that's the thing about Marvel, is it's always, like, every Marvel movie that comes out <clears throat> since... Endgame was like, you could do better. You could definitely do better. I can only definitely. think of like two examples where it's like the movies, three examples maybe, if you want to argue Spider-Man, No Way Home. But no. I, I I, didn't like No Way Home, so I'm not going to argue that one. Shang-Chi and Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 3, I think were the, yeah. only, were the only two movies where you could say, that's good. That, that, was, that was a good mm-hmm. movie. That was, you didn't need to change anything. Yeah, you could have probably added something, maybe, but I didn't need it, you know? And that's the problem with Marvel, is it's just like, like, Doc, Doctor Strange was like, oh, you know, it's a movie, you know, it numbed my brain for two hours. That's, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanium was like, ah, uh, you know, yeah, it could have definitely been improved upon a lot, but it was a good movie. I remember we talked about that. It was definitely better than mm-hmm. a lot of the other shit, like Eternals. Lord. Eternals was horrible. I actually, here's the funny part. Uh, I saw how bad Eternals was, or uh, how everybody bashed on it. I was all like, damn, I really have to see it now because I'm I'm in the mood to watch something bad. And, and funny enough, I was about 20, 30 minutes into the movie and I was like, dang, this isn't as bad as everybody says. What the hell is everybody talking about? And then it got to the whole, oh, the the you people who've seen it probably you, you probably know it, it got to that stupid thing where uh, they live so long their memories collapse in on themselves and then yeah. you find out that they're not even beings at all they're just these robots built by the eternals and i was like oh oh well yeah, um well, now you, now now you ruined it because honestly the idea of memories collapsing from living so long is actually an interesting concept and i was enjoying some of the other things but it's like now now you ruined it now you took something fun and you ruined it yeah and and here's the thing about, and, and here's the thing about eternals too that i didn't like i was so hoping for galactus i've been wanting galactus the next big guy after thanos that people think of is galactus not freaking uh, what's his nuts the stupid guy who's the villain right now uh kang kang yeah not kang we wanted galactus if they would have if they would have started pushing you know what 2021 was a little it was about two years after endgame but if they would have started teasing stuff like that in 2021 it might have kept me just far enough in like in into the universe i could have i could have handled it but we've got nothing of galactus nothing like the only thing that we could maybe get of galactus that you could argue because there's no definitive answer was at the end of shang chi when the rings are calling out to somebody well who are they calling out to and it says oh it's calling out super far away well then they're just like they're probably gonna just make it oh it was calling out to kang okay come on dude like you could oh man i wanted it i wanted it I thought we were going to get Galactus as well, because even though the movie sucked Thor Love and Thunder, we still got Eternity, and Eternity is supposed to be tied to Galactus somehow. Yeah, and also the lady at the end of Doctor Strange, too, in the post credit. What's her name? The girl with the pink, or with the purple suit? Um, at the end of Doctor Strange, too. Oh, yeah. Sh- sure. uh, Charlie Theron. 
she's like tied to Galactus somehow. Um, so they've been teasing it. But here's the thing. No, no, no. no. Here's the, here's the problem. Here's why they're not teasing it. Because each director, it, it, since they're making these Marvel movies all at like the same time, right? They're they're not communicating with each other because things are overlapping because they're trying to get the movies out as quickly as possible. Is in one corner of the universe we have this, and then another corner of the universe we have this because they coincide with each other because they're making the movies so quickly. So like one director is thinking, oh, we should have Galactus, and then the other director is thinking, oh, we should have Kang, and then you have this other guy that doesn't even think of either, like in Ant Man and the Wasp, where it's just like, oh, we're gonna have Kang, but Kang's dead. <laughs> It's like what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh Kang, you know what? I'm gonna be honest. Uh Kang is such a stupid idea. I think it should have been um uh the the one from Guardians of the Galaxy 3, the evolutionary. Oh, that would have been cool. I loved him. He was he's been so far since Thanos, the best villain we've gotten. And I actually loved him when I saw him in the theater. I, I When I saw what he was doing, I was like, this dude, I love this dude. And every time you think he's just some random guy who has power going to his head, like when the, in the, I'm assuming the, the captain's quarters, when, you know, where they steer yep. the, and he, they all start rebelling against him. He all of a sudden just pulls out this Superman blast. <laughs> yeah, and I was, just dude, that was like, I was like Oh, he I just fucking like, obliterated no. everybody. Like, it's like nobody knew he could do that. And he was like revealing a superpower to them. And I'm like, see, I would love a battle between him and, and like, you can't tell me this dude didn't pull a, a Emperor Palpatine and have a bunch of clones. Yeah, there's no. It, the thing about him, too, is he's um like his character he is like a super villain. Like, a lot of times, like, Ant-Man and the Wasp, like, you know, you had Kang. Kang didn't look like a supervillain to me. He got murked by Ant-Man. Like, that's not supervillain. Come on now. Supervillain is somebody, like, where they have all this power, and they're doing stuff with their power. All I've seen from Kang so far is I've heard talk. I've heard talk of him being this big, you know, galactic emperor, like, he can take over the, like, galaxies and universes. I've only heard about it. I haven't seen him do anything. Uh, he he should have stayed at the end of Loki. Yes. He's a good Loki villain. I think that, I think he, he's, yeah, I think he's a good Loki villain. I don't think he's a good main villain. I think a better main villain could have been the, the, um, the actual Eternals could have been a cool villain. Like the, oh, yeah. the, the people who, you know, the, uh, how they birth the gods from the, un from the planets, yeah. you know? I mean, after Eternals, think about it. Like, uh, what what's that guy's name? The the big guy who was who who like made the Eternals. The you know who I'm talking about? The big rock guy, the red rock guy. Yeah, I I don't I don't remember his name. He's gonna be pissed that they stopped him, right? And he's gonna come for Earth, man. Like he's gonna be like, oh hell no! Now everybody's gonna die. He, at the end, of the end credit scene for Eternals, he did come to Earth. And he he came, came to Earth, but he only took the Eternals. That's funny. He only took her in particular. The 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 turn stuff into Stone Girl. Don't remember her name. The Asian and, lady. And no words on uh, how everybody feels about a giant robot sticking out of the ground now. <laughs> yeah, dude, exactly. You've seen nothing. I've seen nothing about the. I've seen nothing about that. I've seen nothing about that. Like even just a tiny cameo would would just connect the universe enough, you know? Like. It's just, it's horrible. And also, we've gotten no word on, what was it, Black Knight either? The, the, the knight guy at the end of, um, at the end credit scene, who's the boyfriend of the, of the lady? We yeah. also have nothing either. We've heard nothing about Harry Styles' stupid Thanos' brother. We've heard nothing about that either. Oh, like, that's, that's gonna be a massive deal, and we've heard nothing about it. Like, they've just forgot about it. They just threw it away. Like, that's where I thought it was going to go. Like, I thought we were about to branch off of Thanos and, like, oh, Thanos' brother and Galactus. No, we just get some random dude from Loki. What it sounds like to me, and this is what it sounds like, it sounded like people liked Loki so much that they just took the villain from Loki and made him into this big thing. Because he does not seem like a, uh, like, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a major supervillain. 
like Thanos. When you think of Thanos, Thanos was booty, booty cheeking people, okay? He was destroying things. And this guy, he's done nothing, man. Like, I want to, I want to, I want to see. I need to see. Don't tell me. Show me. Yeah. That's show, a show, show me, show me the universe that he destroyed everything. Like, show me a universe where he literally just went through and killed all the Avengers a thousand times. Because he's like, oh, I've killed you, Ant-Man, a hundred times over. It's like, really? You didn't kill him this time. He's probably referring back to when he was on the typewriter at the end of Loki. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I wrote your story to be crap a thousand times. <laughs> Look like some Redditor. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's pretty good. All yeah. right, what are these movies though you're excited for? So here here's the one that I'm really excited for. Uh the so the Nun 2 dropped. Um that was I I I know you were kind of I'm going to go see that I think at some point. Or at least I'm going to watch it somehow. Um Okay. I don't think I'm going to see it in theaters. The movie, the next big movie, I don't think it's going to be a blockbuster, but it's definitely what I'm excited for. The Creator. Yeah, I saw the trailer for that. Um, um th- that's dropping uh, on uh on Saw Patrol uh, day, uh, Friday, September 29th. It's dropping the same day as Saw Patrol when uh, the next Barbenheimer, you know, because it's going to happen. <laughs> and the creator, it's got um, John Washington. Uh, it's got Benedict Wong in it. It's got, it's, it's got a decent cast. It's got a decent cast. And I love the concept of it. Like, I think the, I think the, the robots look awesome. And I love the concept. Yeah, of they the, do. I, I saw the trailer and I love the concept for the movie. And it's a good awareness movie for stuff that's going on right now with, like, robots and AI and stuff like that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I think uh, people need to people need to refresh on AI because, I mean, even, like, Stanley Kubrick's, dude, uh, uh, two, 2000 and freaking, yeah, the Space Odyssey, 2001 A Space Odyssey, you know, that movie with the... Uh, oh, yeah, okay, uh, I've seen it. That. That's a good AI movie, too. Um, so Saw is coming out. Killers of the Flower Moon. Martin Scorsese. Ah, uh, yes. This I, one. I am very excited for the movie. Uh, mainly because I love Leo, uh, Robert De Niro, and it's Martin Scorsese. Now, like, do you understand long. that movie? Now, <clears throat> it's based on that novel, Killers of the yeah. Flower Moon. The, the novel uh, itself is kind of... Okay, have you ever... Um, how do I put this? It's a historical fiction... Yes. Uh, it's about something that did happen in history, but it's like a historical fiction. Like this is like uh, if I had wrote a, a time during like the birth of Jesus, clearly I will be making up a bunch of stuff. But the birth of Jesus, yada, yada. Yeah. So like this is about the Osages down in Oklahoma and their mm-hmm. oil fields. Yep. And honestly, I'm really excited to see um, what they do and if they follow the book nicely um, because it's really the book that is the best, not necessarily how close they stick to the history of it. Because the book did a good job at at uh, retelling the history of the Osage people and what happened with them uh, in a in a much more understanding way. And I really hope that this movie, you know, brings that. Because if they screw this up, it's gonna it's gonna suck. I do know that they made sure to hire an all. Uh, Native American cast from Oklahoma, so they did get real Osage uh, Indian actors. Well, usually he follows um, books pretty pretty closely. Um, <clears throat> like the actual when he when he did Wolf of Wall Street, when Scorsese did Wolf of Wall Street, like he, he essentially just it's just the book, like it's just the book with Leonardo DiCaprio. Like the, it's it every single event and recounting of the event is basically what happens in in. Um, that the novel that that guy wrote about himself. Dang, so so the sniffing cocaine from yes, the butt. That, no, yeah, that that, <laughs> that everything everything are the pouring hot wax on his balls and stuff like that. Dear, <laughs> dude, that movie, that movie is, dude, I love that movie. That's one of the that's still considered that's in my top fifteen movies of all time. I love that. Movie. That's definitely one of Leo's best works. Um, well, was Goodfellas a um a novel? I have no idea. Uh, I, I I think Taxi Driver was definitely a novel. At some point, it had to have been. That's got Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro and Scorsese get together like bread and butter, dude. They just. He was in The Irishman too, wasn't he? With Scorsese. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Robert loves that guy. But 
no um no historical fiction like yeah historical fiction is fun it's my favorite genre that's 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 semi what i'm writing for sick out of fashion that's what i read it's a horror uh historical fiction of yeah of coronavirus corona corona uh so yeah so killer of the flower moon is gonna be the movie if i don't go see the creator i absolutely know i will go see the killers of the flower moon 100 percent. i will see killers of the flower moon it's just now the but yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, the creator, the creator. When I watched the trailer, I I love the concept. Just like you, the robots look good. Everything looks good. I just feel like the trailer is not selling me on the acting. Yes, I'm. I'm kind of. I'm. I'm a little nervous, but I'm hoping that it kind of just plays better. Sometimes. Yeah. Some. Sometimes trailers. You know, some movies have bad trailers. Tenant. I love Tenant. By... How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, true. Yes, literally. No, Tenet. I, okay, look, I love Christopher Nolan, and Tenet was not his best movie, but it was a good movie. the The trailer did not sell me on Tenet at all. I went and got. I went and I went and saw it just because it was Christopher Nolan. I, I did love it. It's a good movie. It's definitely not his best work. It's definitely down there with uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Like, uh, not okay. Here's the thing about Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan doesn't have a bad movie. He doesn't have a bad movie. So the thing about Christopher Nolan is when I say at the bottom of his list, that's still like at the top of like all time great movies. <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> so like Tenet and uh Tenet and Dark Knight Rises are like his two or Batman Begins. Those those I mean, they're they're not like they're not the greatest movies, but they're not like bad. They're they're definitely all time great movies. Iconic movies. Tenet oh, yeah. especially. Tenet is especially iconic just because of like it was it's like one of the only ones that accurately portrays like how like how backwards time would work. And also like everything happens at the beginning of the film. If you watch if you watch the film and you have seen it and then you rewatch it, you'll see stuff that makes sense that you didn't see before, which is crazy. There's an Exorcist movie coming out. Uh yeah. Believer. That. I don't think I'm going to go see that, but I just want to I'm not either. I just wanted to say that there's an Exorcist movie coming out. They need to stop making them. Um, Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Oh, my God. Are you guys excited for this? No, I'm going to shake that one off. Yeah. <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. Woo. <clears throat> now, an interesting movie that's only going to be on Netflix, but I'm kind of excited for it. It's Pain Hustlers. Have you heard about this movie? No, I have not. Tell so, me. So, Pain Hustlers has got Emily Blunt in it. Uh, it's directed by David Yates, uh, or Yats, Yates, Yats. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of his work. Um, it's got Emily Blunt, Chris Evans. Um, it, it's coming out. It's a Netflix only movie, but essentially, it's like uh, so. David Yates directed like Fantastic Beast movies, and he directed one of the or I don't how many of the Harry Potter movies did he direct? I don't remember. Um, uh, don't know. But it's essentially it's kind of like Red Notice, where it's like a a crime drama thing, you know. But it's actually based on true ah. Uh, so here's the actual full description of it. Um, it. It's based on true event crime drama that centers on a woman who takes a job at a pharmaceutical startup in Florida and finds herself at the center of a criminal conspiracy. The film stars Emily Blunt, Chris Evans, Andy Garcia, among others. I'm kind of excited. <clears throat> it, yeah, it, I'll it just, watch it. it. The trailer looked hilarious. I mean, Chris Evans, he's... Chris Evans, I mean, Chris Evans, yeah, he's had a couple Congrats of to the marriage, Chris Evans. Oh, true, dude. I would love to be Chris Evans. God, he's good looking. Okay, moving, <laughs> moving I on. I wouldn't. He sounds like a a, a d bag. Really? I, I is he actually like a d bag? Off camera, as... I can already see him being a d bag. I'm you sorry. Think so? He's kind. Of, I mean, yeah, I suppose. I don't know. He's got I... that d bag chat energy. <laughs> he was in Scott Pilgrim versus the World. <laughs> he looks older in Scott Pilgrim versus the World than he does now. I don't know how it's possible. <laughs> that movie came out 13 years ago, dude. And he looks older. It's because of the it's because of the uh the like facial hair thing that they made him wear. Hey buddy, I think you're seeing double. <laughs> yeah. Fucking dude. Shut up, bro. <laughs> dude, do you remember that? He played the actor that she dated. Ramona Flowers dated the actor guy and he played the actor and he and Scott Pilgrim's like, I bet you can't skateboard down this massive massive stairway. Oh yeah, watch me. And he just skateboards and he hits the bottom of this of the of the stairs and just blows up. He just blows up. <laughs> that movie's fucking so 
hilarious. Um, okay, moving on. The Killer uh, was a Netflix only movie, but it like, kind of looked interesting too. Uh, I, I I've only I didn't watch the full trailer. I've just heard a lot of people say that they are excited for it, so I'm assuming it's probably got some merit for it. It's a neo noir thriller. Marvel's not watching that, but that will be coming out um, November 10th for anybody who cares. Woo. <clears throat> uh, what else? Hunger Games, Ballad of the Songbirds and Snakes, which I'm not going to be watching because I boy I'm boycotting the Hunger Games after the trilogy, and also I'm boycotting it because they are basically essentially just stealing 1984, uh, but without taking credit for it. Like, the movie is literally 1984, uh, sort of, kind of, a little bit. It's like, it, so essentially what it is is it's just like the, it's the early, um, it's like the early, like bef- right before when John, right before Jon Snow became like the leader of the new United States, whatever bullshit that, you know, the Hunger Games, all the, the districts. districts, the yeah. capital. Yeah. So it's before that. And it's like when the Hunger Games is first starting and, it, and life is still kind of semi, you know, um, like people still have rights kind of like you can drive cars and you can you like people still have lives and they have jobs and they're getting paid money you know it's not just like the district system uh and it's kind of turning into that authoritarian society kind of and it's essentially just stealing like the startup 1984 and i don't like it so there uh that movie's coming out on november 17th if anybody cares uh to go see that there's also a novel of that too now the movie that i'm really excited for um ridley scott is back baby and he's making Napoleon. He's making a Napoleon. Uh, oh yes, with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, and I am. I'm really excited. I I I'm curious. Did Ridley Scott ever make a uh like a a, a docu drama like a docu movie before? I don't. I don't think so. I've or never like heard even of a, or like that. a biography because this is if that's the case, this is the first one. It looks good though. It um. It does. And and he also is it's the same cast as Gladiator too mostly Joaquin Phoenix um Ben Miles was in Gladiator wasn't he I don't remember somebody was in Gladiator with him though in that movie so yeah I'm excited for that that's coming out November twenty second so that's gonna be your Thanksgiving movie yeah. um for people who want to go see a movie when they go back to see family um there is a few other movies that kind of look stupid Godzilla minus one. That is a Japanese Godzilla franchise. Um, Looks good. It, it's not the American one. It's not the uh, King of Monsters one, like the universe with King Kong and all that. So don't get your hopes up that we're getting a Godzilla American movie. This is Godzilla uh, of the Japanese franchise. So it's directed by Ta- uh, Takashi Yamazaki, the guy who did... Um, I don't remember but he did something else. He's also, he did all the visual effects himself too. So that movie will be cool. That's like coming out, uh, poor things. That's got Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, all that. Yeah. That movie looks kind of okay. And then Wonka. Wonka. Uh, yeah. Wonka. Timothy Chalamet. Kind of, it's got Keegan, Michael Key. Really? Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. that movie's coming uh, out December fifteenth. So, um, Rebel Moon, <laughs> Zack Snyder. Uh, we'll talk about Rebel Moon when we come back, um, because we're running a little long. So when we come back, we'll talk about Rebel Moon, and then Marvel is pushing all of their movies back really far. Is Marvel gonna survive that long? We'll be back. We are back with the Beast Cast. Um, so we just rewatched the Rebel Moon trailer. Um, and the thing is about Rebel Moon. That I want to talk to you because I got a lot to say. I also know a lot about this movie too. Um, so what? Let let me before I get your opinion. <clears throat> what did you think of when when you were seeing that? Like, what was the first thing that came to mind when you saw everything on that screen, how it was playing in the trailer? Um, that since what, Di- since Disney's failing, Zack Snyder came in with his own Star Wars. So here's the best part. You're hundred percent right. And I knew this is what everybody thought, right? So they did some research. They when they interviewed Zack Snyder. This movie, and I kid you not, when you hear the word Rebel Moon, Star Wars, or when you hear Rebel Moon, you see the laser swords, you see all that stuff. You want to know why it looks like that? <clears throat> because this was supposed to be a Star Wars movie. <laughs> so they had to change the movie. In 2012, Zack Snyder had this idea for Rebel Moon. Um, I don't I, I think it was called Rebel Moon. 
And this was before Disney. This was right around the time, you know, Disney had just bought George Lucas or Lucas films. And so Zack Snyder came to them and said, Hey, you know what? Look at this guys. You guys need a, you guys want to do a really cool project with star Wars, you know? And this was, and then they were like, Oh, you know, that actually sucks because we're going to make our own star Wars trilogy, which was sucked, you know? But so Zack Snyder was like, here's my idea of a star Wars movie. And they liked it at first. And they were like, okay, you know, we'll give you some budget and stuff. So he started making the movie and the screenplay and everything. And around 2013, they were like, you know what? No, we're going to scrap you because we uh, we want to make our own, you know, warrior hero uh, woman Star Wars, you know, with a girl protagonist. And he goes, what? Dude, you guys gave me all this money and all this stuff to do this. And now, you know, you're throwing me away. So the movie went on hiatus while he made um, <clears throat> some amazing movies <laughs> uh, like Justice League, Batman versus Superman, stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um and he finally, after getting cut from DC, came back to the idea, I want to say around whenever he got cut. And so for the past, I want to say four, three years, he's had this idea and he over COVID, he brought the idea back and he was writing it and got the screenplay, all that stuff set up. And then they started filming it. And yeah, so everything in it um, is essentially just like Star Wars. Uh, it was all designed to be a Star Wars movie. Uh, for most of the part, the general outline of the of the story had completely been written by 2013. So we're gonna see essentially Zack Snyder's version of a Star Wars movie. Yeah, it looks like um, it looks like he decided to expand lost potential with Dune and expand what Star Wars could have been in one movie. And I feel like this is like a Thanos moment where he put on the glove and was all like, fine, I'll do it myself. Yeah, so that's essentially, you're 100% right. Um, he essentially was like, this is the movie I've been, because he's been wanting to do this movie for a while. That's what he said in the interviews. He's been wanting to do this movie for a while, but nobody would back him to do it until Netflix finally gave the mantle and said, well, well we will, you know, back your movie. Because it Netflix, I think, is hoping that maybe they'll get a shot in the dark and they'll get some sort of Star Wars franchise from this uh, type of deal <laughs> where they'll get their own Star Wars and people will come back to Netflix just for this, like they would Lucasfilm and Disney. Oh, yeah. uh, but it's not going to happen. Um, speaking on Star Wars... Okay, hold on. No, I'm getting so ahead of myself because i got a lot I want to talk about on this. So first off, what did you think of the trailer now itself? Uh, I love the trailer itself. The, the trailer itself did a good job at... Showing me, I want to watch it. I, I, I do. I want to watch it. I want to see his idea and what he wanted to come up with for his own world that he had to change from obviously a Star Wars script. But yes. just I want to know what Zack Snyder's vision would be for a galactic empire. Um, I want to, I want this movie to do one thing that's a very heated topic. I want this movie to show Disney that you can have a female protagonist and a female who is the like you know the typical you know strong female but done right because ray sucked so yes. bad is and is the poorest example of having a strong female and, and i want this movie to show everybody it's not the female that's the issue it's the writers and scar giver is 100 percent gonna do that i can already tell you i've seen a trailer i've seen a, I, I, i've seen of the trailer, she's only in the trailer for about a minute and ten seconds, probably of it. But I can tell you right now, I already like Scargiver more than I like Ray. Um, and the thing is, is then, because here's the thing: a lot of people right now they the, they will scream and yell at you because you don't like Ray because she's a woman, which is not true at all. Once we actually get a female empowered, a, a powerful female character who's well written. It actually had we understand where her powers come from, how she got to her powers. Then maybe people will will actually say, yeah, you know, Ray kind of sucked because it yeah it's not anything about that. It, Ray is not a well written character, and people are finally starting to realize that now that we have Ahsoka in live action, and the general audience who never watched Clone Wars or Rebels finally realized, whoa, wait, there's been this powerful uh, woman female character in Star Wars this whole time. Yes, she's been there the whole time. She just, yeah. dude, Dave Filoni, that man is a genius, but nobody will give him a platform. And Ahsoka is one of the most well-written characters in the Star Wars universe, period, okay? Period. Not just female, period, of all characters. And I, that's that's why when 
people like my my English teacher in eleventh grade. She was like, "That's kind of sexist." I said, "How? I don't like Ray. It's not because of that. It's because here's what I'm comparing Ray to. I'm comparing Ray to Ahsoka, and I can tell you from Ahsoka, I can tell you right now, Ray has nothing on how well Ahsoka's written. Ahsoka mm-hmm. has a backstory. As- ah- Ahsoka." has moments where where she's not the strongest and she works her way up to being a powerful jedi she is one of the most powerful jedi at well i mean to be fair it's not hard to be one of the most powerful jedi at the time that she's a powerful jedi but still it's it's she is a she's powerful a hope jedi. in the universe she is a hope time. in the universe yes and also the fact that she can fight darth vader fight darth vader one of the strongest i kid you not one of the strongest people in the universe and have a chance at saying, oh my god, she's going to win. Like, you know when you watch two sports teams, and they play, and you're like, oh, that team's done. They, they, there's no chance they're going to win. They suck, you know? And because that other team's so powerful. It's not like that with her. There's no power difference. She is strong, and she is a strong character. And I want, finally, I want a general character who's a female, because I love, I, I love female protagonists. I love that that's a thing. I want it to be a strong female protagonist, so then we can shut up about Ray. Okay? I don't mm-hmm. like Ray. And I want I want her character to be scrapped because it's not a well-written character. And we need we need a strong female character. Now, now for now for people listening, okay, because Jay said something here. And every time somebody like Jay says it, I hear the dumbest crap from people who defend Ray. Or just the this two IQ, only two brain cells rubbing take. And that is, oh. Sure, she can fight Darth Vader, but what's the difference between her fighting Darth Vader and being able to take Darth Vader on and Rey being able to take on Palpatine, supposedly her grandfather? There is a difference between, and it's not because of lore, there is a difference in the writing between how Osaka takes on Darth Vader and is able to take on this mighty force that used to be Anakin Skywalker and the difference between Rey simply walking into a room and holding two lightsabers together and deflecting lightning until an old man dies. There is a huge difference in the writing on how it's done because what Osaka, when it came to her story, she went through a lot of bad crap that refined her character and, and and got her to that point. Whereas Ray, everything has been a walk in the park and there's been no challenge for her in the slightest, no challenge. And that's the difference between in, in writing a character. If you can have, I mean, think about it. Some people find the same reason for why they don't like uh, Superman because Superman, Superman comes in there and the only time you can damage him is with kryptonite. Otherwise, nothing's a threat for him. Oh, Lois didn't want to go on a date with him. Woohoo, who gives a crap? But it's like when it comes to fighting a, 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 an adversary, there's never been where I'm sitting there and I'm going, dang, I don't think Superman's actually going to make it. That's why I liked Batman versus Superman, cause because for once it felt like I was all like, oh, Superman yeah. actually has something at stake here. I want to see a Zack Snyder universe where Superman actually fights somebody like Zeus, because it's been shown that um, Superman's. Uh, weakness isn't just kryptonite it's magical beings like mm-hmm. zeus and i'm like having a he but, can take damage from magic from magic in yeah. itself isn't that like green lantern's big thing too is green lantern actually is pretty yes. strong against superman because he's magical yeah and so i kind of want to see that but there's a difference back to star wars and, and female characters there's a difference between i mean here's the funny part i like terminator dark fate more than i like ray yeah, that is a that is a tough that is a tough thing to say. That is a tough thing to say. I will say I would rather watch Terminator Dark Fate and oh. root for what I saw going on there than to watch The Last Jedi and uh, Rise of Rise, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. And here's here's the thing. <clears throat> and and so I'm a big Star Wars guy. So when people bring that IQ take, it's not like I don't just defend myself. Here is the difference between Ahsoka. And um, the difference between Ahsoka and Rey. The thing is, if you want to go by a lore standpoint, we can even say, even at Palpatine's strongest in Rise of the Skywalker, when he takes their Force Essence and he he comes back to life, okay? We can still say that he is weaker than Darth Vader. Because here's the deal about, about Palpatine. 
Yoda booty clapped him. And I'm not talking like, I- I'm talking took him out back old Yeller style and made him retire. Him, here, yeah. here, here's the thing about Palpatine. Palpatine is not strong. And Palpatine is not strong anymore because there is two reasons. Number one, he loses all of his power by his own will. When he's fighting, okay, when he's fighting, he loses his own power. And when you when he uses his lightning, okay, so on Mace Windu in episode three, he fights, he loses his lightsabers, and he uses he he basically drains himself of his of his life trying to kill Mace Windu. And he does eventually kill Mace Windu, thanks to Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader. Then Yoda, Palpatine, is now hurt like a mofo. Yoda's old, okay? So Yoda's not going to be able to fight as good as he was. So Yoda is, like, yes, the greatest Jedi, but he's also a thousand years old and he's about to die. So Yoda and Palpatine, who are two basically veterans who have no power left, essentially fight and fight and fight. And he takes all of Palpatine's will. Palpatine basically, essentially, is there, there is in the comics. Palpatine is so tired. He is so tired from fighting Yoda that the reason why he didn't get to Anakin faster is because he was napping. He was taking a nap because he was so tired. He lost all of his power fighting Yoda. <laughs> like, he was literally, yeah. And also, I mean, to be fair, it did help because, you know, then Anakin burned a little more. But also, people are like, well, if he's not so powerful, then how come Darth Vader didn't just take him over? You want to know why? Because the Darth Vader suit is specifically designed to be weak to Palpatine. Palpatine, at the time, the suit was already dated from when Darth Vader put on the suit. It was ancient when Darth Vader put on the suit, okay? He could have got way better suit. Like, he could have got, he could have almost been rebuilt, actually, to Anakin Skywalker. But Palpatine didn't want that because you want somebody who's submissive and you can control, okay? Like Count Dracula in Renfield. Exactly the same thing. Palpatine is essentially a vampire. He sucks the life out of people and, and controls them through his own power and be by having submissive you know, easy to control targets in Darth Vader is strong. Okay. But he's not strong against Palpatine. So that's not an argument we can make when it comes to just straight fighting. Okay. The only person who has ever been able to take on other than Ahsoka, who's been able to take on Darth Vader and bring him to a point where he was actually fearing for his own life. That wasn't his, that wasn't Ahsoka was Luke because even Obi-Wan Obi-Wan was strong and Obi-Wan defeated him in the Obi-Wan show. And also, um, he had him going even when Obi-Wan was old and, you know, in episode four, but that, that, that's a whole different thing. The Luke, his own son was the only person. And that was because Anakin and Obi-Wan knew he wasn't going to die. He knew that Obi-Wan was not going to kill him because Obi-Wan's a very, you know, he, he's a by the book Jedi. He refused to kill him on mm-hmm. Mustafar. He's going to refuse to kill him there. He wasn't fearing for his life. Where he was fearing for his life was with his son. Because even though he trained with Yoda and he trained with with uh, Obi-Wan, he saw in Luke, he saw himself in his rage in episode six. He saw himself in Luke. And he was fearing for his life because it reminded him so much of himself in the stuff that he was doing to try and kill Obi-Wan that that's what it reminded him of. And he was so scared of Luke that he basically essentially switched sides. <laughs> he gave up. The only now Ahsoka, here's here's where Ahsoka comes into play. Ahsoka essentially had Darth Vader to the point. Now, I don't know if they showed this in the show. I'm, I've yet to watch the show out because I always wait to watch those Disney shows until they're fully done because or else I get too giddy and I and I lose my mind, okay? Um Ahsoka in, in Rebels. After so it's so during the Clone Wars, she she stood no chance. She tried to help Anakin at right before he turned to the dark side. It didn't help. Um, she didn't even try to fight him, but he she would have lost. She's a very bet. She's a much better Jedi in Rebels. In Rebels, she and in Anakin go or Darth Vader go hand in hand for almost a whole episode. So a whole twenty minute episode, and it gets to the point where Vader is lost half of his suit in like basically cut cut off from the Force almost. And Ahsoka also has um, a lot of powers that a lot of people don't know about because she's a, so she's kind of like Qui-Gon Jinn, you know, you don't remember Qui-Gon Jinn, Liam Neeson, where she's a very yeah. big, like, meditation force Jedi where she uses a lot of the, fo- the force will guide me, force ghost type of deal. So she has a lot of powers, like Yoda, where she essentially has a lot of force spirits that are with her. So essentially, like, in Rebels, she's able to access a world, um, or she's brought back, she's brought back through a, a thing called the world between worlds. 
uh, and she can access that. And that's how she helped defeat or almost defeat Vader. She tried to crush, she sacrificed herself and Vader um, to try and kill Vader. She, she essentially had Vader at the point where she was like, we're both going to die. I'm just, we're going to kill it. Vader survives. Uh, thanks, thanks to Palpatine. Um, he, he gets, he got crushed and Vader is basically on the brink of death again. He survives and Ahsoka dies. Okay. So she dies in rebels, but here's the thing. The world between worlds is funny because it's essentially like a, uh, a, a MacGuffin. It essentially is like, you know, like a, a piece of the story that just, you know, everybody's striving to get towards in rebels. And in yeah. the world between worlds, you can essentially pull, you can go back in time. It's like a time travel portal. You can essentially go back to any point, pull any person, anything or anyone out of that point, or you can go back to that point in yourself. So he, um, the main character, uh, the blue haired guy, I don't remember what his name is. He pulls Ahsoka out right before she kills Vader and, and completely messes up the timeline. So the timeline goes from Vader being crushed and barely surviving Palpatine or having Palpatine save him to Ahsoka's about to, about to crush both of them. And he pulls her out last second and Vader just walks away. So essentially the only person that ever was able to stand up to Vader was Ahsoka and his son. <laughs> so you want to talk about strong characters? That's a strong character. If Darth Vader is considered one of the strongest characters in the universe and she was on the brink of death by, by Ahsoka, then you can argue that she's like one of the strongest characters. So I don't want to hear this bullshit about Rey, and I don't want to hear this thing about, oh, Rey defeated Palpatine. Rey had no buildup. Swinging around a lightsaber for, for four scenes in Last Jedi does not make you a strong Jedi. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Doesn't. And I, I stand by that. And yeah. No, I, I get I get really I get really into that. So for people who, who are claiming like, oh, you know, she defeated Palpatine and all that, no. First off, I don't even consider that canon anyway, so it doesn't even matter. I'm not even going to argue it. And yeah, go screw yourselves, guys. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, now we need to put the we need to put the hand down on the table here. <clears throat> Marvel. So, here's the big thing. Marvel has announced that Secret Wars, their big Marvel uh uh Avengers movie, their next big Avengers movie after Endgame is being pushed back from 2025. So already a very long release date is being pushed back to 2028. Now, my question for you, and this is where we kind of go off topic depending on how we feel. Do we think that Marvel is actually going to be popular enough to have people care in 2028 for their movies? No. I want to hear your advice. No? You don't think so? No, it's a straight up no. Uh, I mean, maybe kids will because kids will always love things, but... I honestly don't think anybody uh, will be interested in Marvel movies. I don't care about Kang. I've never heard one person who cares about Kang other than the people who like to meme. Uh, I, I've never... Shang, honestly, they need to get rid of everything that they're working on and just focus on, focus on Shang-Chi. Just develop the world of Shang-Chi and act like the rest of the Marvel movies don't exist. It, it's... It, I. I don't, nobody cares about Marvel. I don't care about Marvel. I've stopped caring about Marvel. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was the last movie that I cared about, and I was happy I cared about it because that movie really hit off, got me in the feel, completed character arcs, helped characters, you know, like it, it I, I love everything about Guardians of the Galaxy 3, including the fact that I cried like five times in the theater uh, with it, which is the first time a movie's ever gotten me to cry in a theater uh, since 2010. And I, I'm, oh. I'm done with Marvel movies. I, I can't. There's nothing interesting. I don't want to see them anymore. I don't even keep, like Spider-Man. Oh. Now, <laughs> okay, hold on. A little off topic. Was the movie in 2010 that made you cry Avatar? What movie made you cry? Uh, Shutter Island. Oh, really? Yeah, I got to go see that when I was as a kid when I was, I think, you didn't, 14. Dude, you didn't cry during The Hobbit? Come on, man. <laughs> Oh no, you're right. Battle of the Five Armies. You when, did actually when, cry. You did cry in the hospital. Yeah, when really? Thor when Thorin was was being held by Bilbo or when Bilbo was holding Thorin and, and stuff. Yeah, I actually had a little bit it wasn't as bad, okay, but like I mean I was I had tears. But uh uh but it wasn't like as bad as Shutter Island and and Guardians of the Galaxy. But Dude, there there were tears for the Hobbit. So I cr I cried a little bit during Guardians of the Galaxy, um during the rocket scene. Rocket. You know where he where he's talking. About, oh my gosh, uh -huh. I love that scene. 
Um, I, I don't... I, I, I'll tell you this. Marvel is the only people that could ever make me cry over a CGI raccoon. <laughs> I, will, uh, I, I will stand by that. I don't think anybody else can make me do that. However, <clears throat> I did actually cry in a movie once. <laughs> and I'm a little shit. <laughs> I cried a little bit during a movie. The last movie I cried, like fully cried. I, I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. Was it Dog's Purpose? really <laughs> so a dog's purpose came out in 2017 so I, so i i would have i would have been 13 years old oh and i gosh. cried during a dog's purpose a little bit it was a sad movie man it was a sad movie it was a sad movie dude i mean you're not wrong it's just dude <laughs> I, I I remember I was like, oh my god, uh, and also the guy who played the dog was also the guy who played Olaf, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, he played in Pixels. Oh, he did. He played in Pixels. <laughs> he played the guy in Pixels. <laughs> Dude, Pixels was all it was a movie. Do you remember Pixels with Adam Sandler? <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna be honest. This movie is my guilty pleasure. I love the movie. Pixels is like, dude. Pixels is the best, bro. I love. And, and, and I like Waka Flocka's uh, song he made for it. Dude, okay, yeah, dude. I still listen to that every once in a while. Dude, I just love it because no like controller, but me playing my game. Kevin James is the president of this universe. God help this universe, man. Uh huh. It's also got the uh, Peter. It's got Peter Dinklage in it, which he's he's hilarious. <laughs> There's a movie that you need to watch <laughs> that will make you laugh so hard. It's called uh it's called Division 3 Football's Finest. This movie, it's a it's kind of a football movie, but it's essentially just like a a documentary <laughs> and it is hilarious. Oh my gosh. It is no, dude. This is some of dude, this is some of Andy Dick's best work. <laughs> it is so bad. It is literally like a horrible movie, but I love it so much. This movie, you, you will laugh your your butt off at this movie. Um, but no, so so my thing about Marvel <clears throat> is here's the thing about Marvel. Do I think Marvel will still be around in twenty twenty eight? Yes. Do I think their movies will still be around in twenty twenty eight? Like they're not gonna fully just cancel this movie. Yes. Do I think this movie will be good? Now, this is the question. Now, because they're moving it back from 2025, the reason is because of the writer's strike. Now, here's the deal. This already makes me kind of pissed off because they're already assuming that that the that the studio heads at Disney are actually are actually going to hold out that long, like long enough to actually affect the production of this movie that's coming out two and a half years from now. Do I think that the movie will be better because they're giving it extra time? Now, let me ask you this. <clears throat> when a game like um, Assassin's Creed, you're a big Assassin's Creed fan, when they took a yeah. year off and spent an extra year making Assassin's Creed, whatever that game was, uh, whatever the one was after, was that Origins that they spent an extra year on or which one was the one that they spent? They took that break. You remember? Because they were dropping an Assassin's Creed game like every year and then they finally took a break. Oh, yeah, it was Origins. Yeah. So how much better was Origins compared to the previous Assassin's Creed game that came out the year prior? In your opinion, in my opinion, um, the story needed a little bit more work, but I could definitely tell that the gameplay and the ideas they wanted for the open world traversing were more thought out and more thoroughly done in Origins, and I was very pleased by it. Because here, here's the thing. <clears throat> Now, to be fair, taking a year off of a game is a lot different than taking three years off uh, uh, of, of the release date of a movie. Um, also, movies yeah. take less time to make, even though they do... Now, with VFX, they do take a crap ton of time, but they still take less time than a full-fledged game. And, they, and at this point, with all the VFX and all the producers of a blockbuster film like uh, Avengers, it's going to have a, probably as many people working on it as a video game. But... <clears throat> This is the argument that a lot of people have about about re about pushing stuff back. If you look at like a game like Madden or or you look at a game like FIFA, if you take a year off, 
would it actually matter? Like, what would they actually do in that year off? And that brings up the question. Do I think the movie's going to be better than what it than what it could have been if it just m- released in 2025? No. If you want my personal opinion, I don't think make, giving them more time to make the movie, not just because of the writer's strike, but also because of co- time constraints, is a bad sign than a good sign. Because that shows that they're so underprepared for this movie that they needed three extra years to make it. That is concerning to me. Because how big is this project really going to be now? Because when projects get that big, it brings up the question, is it ever actually going to be how the vision's going to be, how the original vision of the, of the story was? So whoever is directing it, I think it's the, is it the guys that directed the original, or the uh, Avengers Endgame? I don't remember who it is. Um... <clears throat> I'll tell you this though, when you have a project that big, you're you're no longer just saying director do what you want. It's now okay. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do, and then that guy, then we're gonna have another guy above me tell me what I have to tell you, and then that guy's getting somebody that's telling him what to do, and then there's another guy. There's so many people that a movie this big is only going to be commercial garbage, and that's the problem. Endgame was almost commercial garbage, but the thing was, is people, knew, the, the directors still had control of the film. They they knew what they were going to do. They knew how they were going to do it. And they brought it to Marvel and Kevin Feige said, okay, perfect. This is, Marvel's no longer like that. Even for smaller budget films, like for example, like Ant-Man and the Wasp, there, it was no longer, or Doctor Strange will, will take us better because it was Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi had no control over what was going on. They slapped his name on the director's spot. When he would make a decision, he had to go and request for that decision to be made. Then that had to take weeks through multiple teams of writers and editors and then come back to him. That's not directing. That's not helping. It's only changing it to be commercial garbage. And the only movie I think that didn't do that recently in Marvel was Guardians of the Galaxy 3 because James Gunn refuses to work like that. He always, it's his vision, and if you don't like it, I'm leaving. So... Yeah, people really wanted that movie, so they kind of just said, "Okay, we'll bite it down, even though it's gonna be garbage. It's gonna suck because it's not our vision." And by the way, I can tell you right now, everybody at Marvel, like all the higher ups, hate Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. They probably think it's horrible. Everybody else loves that movie, but they hate it because it's not their vision. Because they're so egotistical that it, because it's not their vision, you know, they hate it. And that's the problem with this movie. Do I think giving it three extra years? I mean, if it was the director saying we need three extra years then maybe because maybe the director actually has control over it but when but but when you are getting three extra years to do something it's just it, it, it's obvious that this is so out of the league of like out of the realm of possibility that i think it's it's just going to be bad it's just going to be horrible it's going to be a bad movie it there's there's just no way also the fact is marvel i don't even know if it's going to be relevant with people in 2028 i mean yeah we always like are like oh my god that's Five years from now, that's so long, which in time scale, five years is kind of nothing, you know? I mean, in a human life, five years is a decent amount, but in like just yeah. time scale of like history of stuff, I mean, think about it. Th- think about this. Um, Avatar released in 2009. That was 14 years ago. 14 years have not felt like it's gone by since Avatar has come out. But the thing is, is w- the, the, the thing is with when you take so long to make a movie like that is you're putting the time scale so they started production of this movie last year so that means that this is a six year long project now in six years of commercial garbage getting thrown in together it's just gonna be it's gonna be a mess there's just no way also in that point marvel is such a like time moves so fast like with with the internet that i think marvel is only going to be like it's gonna be like Fortnite, where it's like super popular with maybe like you know a little bit of adults and mainly just kids it's just mainly going to be kids, like you said. It's going to be a lot of kids that are going to go see this movie, um, which means that it's not going to be able to be cool PG-13. It's going to have to be, like, like low PG-13, uh, like, kind of, like, on the on the bottom scale of, like, stuff that's happening, which, for better or for worse, whatever, you know. But if you want my opinion, I think that will probably be right at the end of the superhero era. I think superhero movies are really going to die by that point. I think that's going to be like the cutoff of what we can, because right now we're in the superhero era. I mean, not every movie that comes out is a superhero movie, but think of it, think of it like this, you know, in the 1950s and the 1960s, what do we call that era of movies? We call that the Western era 
because it was a lot of westerns. But not every movie that came out during the 1950s and the 1960s was western. But we just consider it that because there was so many of them and so many TV shows. Same thing with, with superhero films. We're going to look back 50 years from now and we're going to say this was a superhero era, like 2010 to, to 2030, you know, this 20-year period, you know. But, yeah, I think, I think superhero movies are on the way out. I think superhero movies are a thing of the past, if you want my opinion. I think they're always going to be around, just like how Westerns are still around. But I think they're going to be <clears throat> a lot different. And I think they're going to be a lot less. <laughs> like, we're going to get movies like the Batman. Like, you know, the 2022 Batman. Where you'll get, a, you'll get a director who really has a vision and the studio is going to back it and say, yeah, this is a good idea. And the Warner Brothers will back it and it will come out and people love it, you know. And <clears throat> it does well in the box office. Just like, um, what was that movie that uh, <sighs> Quentin Tarantino did? Uh, Hateful Eight. Just like Hateful Eight, you know. Oh, West, that movie Western, was funny. West, Western movies, you know, aren't popular. as or as popular as they used to be. But, you know, Quentin Tarantino has his vision, gets backed by the studio. Makes a beautiful movie, everybody loves it. And that's kind of like superhero movies are gonna be. As long as we don't have an Iron Heart movie, I don't care about Marvel. If they have an Iron Heart movie, I will actually never watch another Marvel movie, no matter if it's good or not. Mm-hmm. Even if even if Shang Chi 2 came out and it was the greatest movie of all time, made two twenty billion dollars in the box office, like literally considered the greatest movie of all time, I wouldn't watch it. If they made an Iron Heart movie. I wouldn't watch it. I refuse. Yeah, I don't plan to. <laughs> So, Raven, any other things you want to discuss? Any other any other things you really need to just get off your chest quick? No, that's about oh, it. Oh, by the way, there's an Aquaman movie, too. Aquaman 2 coming out at the end of the year. Um, and apparently it's the shortest DC EU movie of all time. At running at like an hour oh. and 50 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't know. That might not be bad. Um, The only thing I will say about it is... I'm pissed off at people. I really don't care if Amber Heard's in it or not. I'm still watching it. Yeah, I mean, me too. I I, I don't like Amber Heard, but I'm not going to boycott the movie because she's in it. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing with The Flash. Yeah, Ezra Miller's horrible. Yeah, he's a really bad person. But also, I'll probably go see the movie, which I did. And I, I thought The Flash was fine, but it... The movie wasn't bad, it's just... The problem is, is it's hard to like the movie when you know that nothing in it matters, you know, like it was a good movie. And if the DCEU could have continued, they, I think it would have been a good stepping point to the next era. Uh, I would have loved to see George, how George Clooney would actually handle the Batman role. So dude, also the funny thing is, is it's, it, it seemed like, you know, cause George Clooney played Batman in the nineties that like, it's such a like ancient thing, dude, he's like younger than freaking Ben Affleck, dude, like, <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, dang, they actually get more bang for their buck if they have George Clooney as Batman, dude. They'll have a longer time period of him being able to do stuff. <clears throat> oh, that, that I'll tell you what, too. one thing the one thing that I will be mad about though is if they do decide to make Robert Pattinson the main Batman of this new DCU, the DCU, I'm gonna be very upset. Just because he's great in his own standalone universe, but I do not want him playing a commercial Batman. I mean, yeah, I would love to have Batfleck back, but we know Batfleck is never coming back, so it's over. Sad, bro. Batfleck, my beloved. The biggest Batman and the best Batman. Was he the biggest Batman? I feel like uh Bale was pretty big. Like like Yeah, Bale was pretty big. Yeah, people didn't have faith in Ben Affleck after Bale. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's tough shoes to fill. It'd be like trying to fill Robert Downey Jr.'s shoes in Iron Man. It's like, you can't do that. He is Batman. I mean, Michael Keaton was a great Batman, but Christian Bale is the Batman. Like, he is the Batman. I don't think anybody will ever do it as good as Christian Bale did. He just, he plays a great Bruce Wayne. That's the problem. Nobody's ever ever been able to play a Bruce Wayne like he could. He's a psychopath. Look at his speed. His power. I see the power of belief. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to end. Thank you guys for watching as always. Uh, Catch us every Wednesday, 5 to 7 p.m. on Kilt Radio. And also, I appreciate, I want to say, I want to say this. I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate 
the massive amount of support for the last episode. We came back and we killed it. We got an okay amount of views on YouTube and we had a lot of people that listened to it on uh, Spotify. Our Spotify numbers were through the roof. So was Apple uh, Podcast. So I just want to say I love you guys so much for listening. And I know Apple really pushes podcasts and so does Spotify like when new ones come out. So, I mean, even if you guys just listened for five minutes, I mean, it doesn't matter. It still means so much to us that you listen to the show and allow us to do what we do because we love it. And yeah, uh, with that, I think we're going to have to uh, say goodbye for the time being. We'll see you next Wednesday. Uh, next week, some crazy stuff might happen. Who knows? You know, uh, Who knows? Starfield, maybe episode whoa oh yeah all right bye guys ciao salut